Welcome back to Cage Chat. Now, I know this is a little later in the week than it's meant to be. This is usually up on a Monday or Tuesday, but I still think it's relevant to be talking about last week's fights, and especially with I covers this week's fights on the fifth round. So, before that comes out, make sure to subscribe to this channel. But first, we're going to start off with Corey Sandhagen versus John Lineker. Now, Sandhagen did get the victory versus John Lineker after what was three rounds of a beautiful fight, a lot of power, a lot of technique, and a lot of skill. But he won by a split decision. Now this caused fans to be fans within the stadium that is to be in absolute uproar. They were complaining, they were booing. Now I don't know how many times I've said it on this channel, but booing for me is the worst thing you can do at a MMA event. I, I get that you've bought your ticket, but to see two men or two women absolutely fight out in a cage for 15 minutes or 25, you know everyone comes in with a technique. To relate to football, you've got defensive managers, you've got attacking managers, you've got counter-attacking managers. And it's the same with MMA. You've got people that will go in with power, you've got people that will counter, and you've got people that could take it to the ground and make it a boring 25-minute fight. But you have to respect everyone's craft, whether it's a kickboxing craft or a, or a Muay Thai or wrestling or boxing even, or jiu-jitsu predominantly as well. You have to respect the craft. And you could see someone... Maybe get a takedown and two or three minutes into the fight, you know, they've got the opponent on their back for the next next two or three minutes of the round and maybe even throughout the rest of the fight. Now for me as personally, you can't do it. They train that way. That's how they win fights and that's what they're paid to do. They're paid to show up and with how the UFC is run, you get a fee in terms of wage on the night and a fee to win. Now if you're telling me that my best style to to win a fight and, ex and earn an extra 10, 20k on the evening shouldn't shouldn't be one that I use. Then you're gonna be, you're gonna have that negativity come back at you. And I think Sandhagen del delivered it perfectly. He said it was hurting him, and I think the the fans realised that on the night. Now he did get more takedowns and landed more strikes in the fight. So yes, I do believe he won that fight fair and square, especially in the first two rounds. John Lineker, John Lineker, sorry did come back in the third round but by then it was too late but he did look very good in that fight I must admit now moving on to the next fight it was the real co-main event for me and it was Mike Perry and Alex Oliveira now this did not disappoint Mike Perry came out first and was waiting in the octagon while Alex Oliveira danced his way to the octagon and now I can't tell you the song but it was incredible Alex Oliveira had fun and it was a way, way I guess of keeping warm in a warm up you know you've got DC who runs out you got the Conor McGregor who almost walks like a night walker with how cool he is to the octagon. So, so yeah, it's it was fun. And you see Mike Perry dancing in the octagon. Obviously, he'd been waiting there, what, two, three minutes while Oliviera comes out, gets ready to get inside the octagon and ready to fight for 15 minutes. And that is exactly what they did. So, yes, I've got my notes here and I put this down as the best walkout ever because I believe, you know, I've never seen someone come out with that much of charisma, that much energy and look forward to stepping in the cage to fight a man who like Mike Perry who is like Mike Perry who is an absolute psychopath and I mean that with all respect and as a compliment and Mike Perry won the fight by decision and I think that was fair and square as well three rounds he dominated for and he was almost looking for a knockout to come here Alex Oliveira had come ac across Gunnar Nelson in his previous fight lost that as well and Cowboy had beaten Mike Perry. So they both come in with losses, both looking for vengeance over their last fights. And it was Mike Perry who got the better of him that night. Now, Mike Perry is a fighter. He called out Darren Till. Now, I don't understand what his relationship is with Darren Till, of course. Back in UFC Liverpool, I believe it was, against Stephen Thompson. After that fight, Darren Till called out Mike Perry and they had some verbals up against the cage. But, of course, their paths took a very different route. Till went on to a title fight... And then to face. So yes, Till obviously went on to the title fight and then went on to face Mazadel and lost both fights. Whereas Mike Perry had his arm broken by Cowboy, took some time out and of course won this fight against Oliveira. So it makes the next fight between them, it probably makes sense at the moment. Now whether they're friends or training partners or the people that just come across and respect each other's skill set and those that would make each other a better fighter then... Then, seeing them inside the octagon for an official fight would be one that I'm very interested in. 
Now, of course, we have to cover Greg Hardy against Smolly Yakov, and it was a train crash, to be honest. I said to my good friend Stephen Housen that I'd rather see CM Punk be given a title shot than see Greg Hardy fight again. And that's no... <laughs> I'm not saying that easily, because CM Punk in the Oscar was not successful. Whereas Greg Hardy has been successful, but for the wrong reasons. He's been heavily promoted against. In terms of... You know, Smolly Yakov had been dropped from the UFC and brought back in just so Greg Hardy could get that win. And he dominated him. And from what I've looked at the stats... Smolly Arkov threw one shot, well he threw three shots and just landed the one, and that is diabolical, and he quickly got, he quickly got shunned, and it wasn't even a knockout, he sort of just gave up really, and that was disappointing to see, but Greg Hardy does have a lot of power in his hands, as his former girlfriend does know, we can't, can't put that aside, but it was a real down, down point on the other end, and it was a down because you had Mike Perry and Oliviera, which sort of brought the the hype and the crowd up a notch and then Greg Hardy come and brought it back down so yes he won that fight and I'm not going to cover it too much other than that but I would really love to see him fight someone like Derek Lewis Curtis Blades I'd like to see him fight Brock Lesnar even I think Lesnar would absolutely manhandle him with his wrestling capabilities you know o the Ring is there too I'd just like to see him get knocked out same as Kobe Covington to be honest but then we go to Jack Comanson and Jack Ray Sosa. Now, of course, Sosa was meant to fight Romero. And Hermanson came in on late notice. And it seemed to pay off seemed to pay off for Hermanson. Jack Ray wasn't quite sure how to how to get to Hermanson. He knocked him a couple of times, but Hermanson did win win this fight quite comfortably in the end. He sort of became a hero on the night. Almost like the reverse of Anthony Smith versus um John Jones. Hermanson wasn't given a lot of credit, a lot of Hermanson wasn't given a lot of credit, a lot of hope. Not many people backed him. I did on the fifth round. Now, it looks like he's fighting Chris Weidman next. Chris Weidman's come out and said that he would like that fight. Now, I know Weidman was injured. Whether he's fit again, who knows? But I'd be up for that fight. I think Weidman obviously lost to Jack Ray. And I think, you know, everyone ahead of Hermanson is, is pretty much fully booked, other than Gastelum. So Gastelum could be a next fight for him too. But Israel adesanya has got a fight for the championship. Romero looks like he's out. Paolo Costa's suspended. So, there's not many options for him. But yes, I think Hermanson versus Weidman or Gastelum is the fight next to be made. Now, Hermanson did win this 49-46 after winning round 1, 2, 4 and 5. Now, in round 3, he did look like he gassed out. But he he put the pressure on in the first two rounds. And obviously, I don't know if this is a planned thing, but take a rest in the third round. That it was his... It was his first time in a five-round fight, and he went the full 25 minutes and didn't look tired at all. But I guess if he took that, you know, that five-minute break, he he had that energy expenditure in the last two rounds to to still be there and still have some gas in the tank. But he could have gone wrong because Jack Ray is a hard hitter. You just have to remember that fight against Chris Weidman where he knocked him out after arguably losing the first two and a half rounds. So yes, let me know what you think of the UFC fought to Lauderdale. Make sure to look out for the fifth round that should be uploaded either today or tomorrow, which will be on fight night. And of course, we've got Ally Quinta versus Cowboy Cerrone, and I'm very much looking forward to that fight. So yes, make sure to hit the subscribe button, follow me on KChatYT, and we'll see you on the next one.